are here at HCAM TV studios in Hopkinton to talk to station manager Jim Cousins. This studio, his second home perhaps, that he's deeply connected and rooted in the area of film. Uh, so we're going to hear how that has come to be over time since he was a young boy uh, loving film and TV. Hi, Jim. I am delighted to be here at HCAM Studios in perhaps your second home, in a <laughs> yeah. way, um, and for Meet Your Neighbor, as perhaps you know, as the station manager for this particular program, we like to interview people where they feel uh, connected to the community, and mm. what better place than right here in the studio. Well, thank you for having me. Um, so with that said, could you tell a little bit about your roots, how you came about to come to the town of Hopkinton and to the studio? Tell the story behind that from your life. Okay. Um, so uh, at the point in my career where I came here or how I got to be in this field? Um, well, let's say the first one. Uh, uh, what do you want to do? All right. Well, I think it's kind of like a linear line. It, okay. So Let's when I was linear. when I was going to go to college, uh -huh. I wanted to be Steven Spielberg, uh -huh. and my parents said, "That's nice, Jimmy, but you like computers <laughs> too, and you can make a living on computers." Mm -hmm. So I went to UMass Lowell, mm -hmm. and I started in computer science, and it was the worst year of my life. Uh -huh. I just wasn't cut out for it. Mm -hmm. So I said, "I I can't do this. I have to go." to another school because they didn't have TV at, um, at U Lowell. And my parents were very supportive of that. I ended up at BU uh, with a degree in broadcasting and film. Uh -huh. So I got out of there. I'm ready to go off to Hollywood, but I didn't want to you know, leave Massachusetts. I started looking around here. Still wanted to be Spielberg? Yeah. Uh, well, I was thinking so. Mm -hmm. I was thinking so. I think I get a little bit of experience. Mm -hmm. So the first opportunity I found was a production assistant at the Westboro community TV station, mm -hmm. WCAT. And within six months, I realized that instead of making a movie that millions of people can enjoy for two hours, mm -hmm. I would rather spend my career at a little TV station that a town could use mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. So that was, and I never had a term for that mm -hmm. until many years later when I was listening to somebody talk. That's my passion. My passion is community information. So I um, had a great time. I worked for Greater Media Cable. I worked at several different stations, Westboro and Northboro, um, Grafton, Holden. Uh, and then I ended up coming back to Westboro to be their director, the public access director. So I, I ended up working for Greater Media for about 10 years. And uh, during that time, I met my wife, and I got married. And mm -hmm. she worked in Southboro. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking we'd like to you know, get a home in the local area. And it was either Westboro, where for, the, where for the same amount of money as Hopkinton, we would get half the land. And my father-in-law said, I like the land. Yeah. So we ended up in Hopkinton <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, uh, raised our kids here. Mm -hmm. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. And um, then I left Westboro so that I could raise my kids for a while. Um, we had a daycare provider who moved out of town. And uh, it just seemed like, you know what? I wasn't bringing home a lot of money after paying for daycare. It was yeah. really expensive. Mm -hmm. So I stayed home with my kids for about six years. Wow. Got to see mm -hmm. them grow up and form a relationship with them. Um, and then they started going to school, and I was ready to get back into the workforce. While I was a stay-at-home dad, I used to do websites ah. for a couple mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing the town's website mm -hmm. as a volunteer, mm -hmm. and then I created the first website for the um, school system that they, that they the ever had. The very first one. Imagine wow. that, mm -hmm. the first one. I, yeah. I got we take it. it for granted now. I know, I know. Even cereal boxes have websites. Mm -hmm. um, so then uh, when I was getting ready to go, uh, the town was negotiating a new contract with the cable company about how to provide community TV. The cable company used to run everything, but things were changing. They just wanted to fund it and have the town run it. Mm -hmm. So the Board of Selectmen formed the nonprofit Hopkinton Community Access and Media, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a board of directors. 
Um, the Board of Selectmen appoint one member, the school committee, uh, I mean, sorry, the superintendent mm -hmm. appoints one member, and then the other three members are elected by members of HCAM, I the see. volunteers who uh, work here. Mm -hmm. So the board did interviews and they hired me as um, their first manager, the station manager. And it's, I've been here ever since. 2004. 2004. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here we are, 2019. That's a long time in one place. I know. And I usually see you with a smile on your face here mm -hmm. in the studio. Um, and I hear a lot of um, good talk about uh, connecting with community through cable television and its related events. Mm -hmm. Um, so congratulations well, to you, you on uh, that uh, story, that achievement over time on what you love to do. I'm curious about the, what you said, the click that happened over in the Westboro uh, station, mm -hmm. that you kind of let go of that Spielberg uh, vision and something else happened you, and you... Right and you decided you were for community cable TV instead. Yes. What was that about? How that, that was about seeing the power of what we can do. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. tagline that I created over in Westboro was to inform, educate, and entertain mm -hmm. our community. Mm -hmm. So I always say, you know what, this is TV, we can do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's so exciting to be a part of keeping the community aware and informed and entertained. Mm -hmm. Before HCAM existed, it was called Hop TV, and I was working in Westboro and I was volunteering ah. here because mm -hmm. I felt like I live in Hopkinton, mm -hmm. I should volunteer here. Mm -hmm. And my volunteer contribution started off as covering school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. And people would say, Jim, how can you do that? It must be so boring. And I would say, boring? I'm the guy standing there behind the camera connecting everybody in town to really important stuff that's happening at these town meetings. Mm -hmm. That's actually exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know what, everybody's made for different things and I just find that thrilling mm -hmm. to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great and uh, so we are fortunate to have had uh, you step into those roles and, and, and make a change for our town as well with the contribution. It was really exciting because when I worked for the cable company, oftentimes, you know, the party line was, we have to fulfill the requirements of the contract. Mm -hmm. And we have to like teach people in town and then they can make whatever shows they want. But when I got here, um, the board really supported uh, the vision that I had, which is of all of our community, this percentage of it is going to come in and learn how to make TV shows. Mm -hmm. But what about all of these? These are all the viewers. These are all the people who are going to be connected to everything else going on. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's a whole different mindset. It, it turns it into how much can we do and what's next around the corner. We're always trying to think of what's next, how to, new ways to connect people, coming up with new programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do underwriting for businesses. We have our community groups program for the nonprofits. We do a lot of government meetings. Um, just all the pillars of the community. We try to we try to be intertwined with them. What are could you name maybe two or three little highlights? Uh, you know, very brief in a brief amount of time because I have other things <laughs> I want to cover. But that come to mind over that span of years you've been here. Well. Um, very cool moments. One of my maybe. first loves was All About Hopkinton mm -hmm. because when I first came here and started volunteering, um, Jim Cosgrove, who worked for the cable company, was running it, said, you know what, this, this show used to happen but it doesn't happen anymore. And I said, that name is too good to mm -hmm. not have a show. Mm -hmm. So we started doing it again. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we didn't have a studio in town. We would go to uh, Milford and empty out an office and work in there. Then we would work down there. So I've, I've been doing that one, we've been a part of that one for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was, that's like exciting for me. Yes. Um, uh -huh. When I get a phone call and somebody says, hey, um, are you guys covering the girls basketball game tonight? Mm -hmm. And I say yes. And they say, oh, that's so good because you know what? I'm in Florida on business, but now I can tell my girl that I'm going to watch her live. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is what we are all about. Yeah. And I know, I used to think about 
but what can I do to, like, to make people recognize us? And one day, early on, when I was working on a wake up smell of poetry, um, I was walking in the hallway, and these two people were walking down, and they said, boy, that's kind of a cool studio, isn't it? Hmm. And the other one said, yeah, it is. And I realized it's a, it's a process, and everything that we do will raise awareness with a few more people. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, people come in, and they use our space for meeting space. It's just so exciting mm -hmm. to be involved with all these people who are working to make Hopkinton a really great place. And you've had people uh, from all stages of life uh, yes. as part of uh, the programming right. here exactly. as well, right? When you have cable TV and you go to the Golf Channel, there's one reason you go there and you know what it is. When you come to our channel, you don't, may not know what you're going to get. Hmm. It could be art. It could be a government meeting. It could be Hiller Sports. It could be an informational talk show. It could be a demonstration of something. Hmm. The thread that ties all of our mm -hmm. programs together is that it's all about Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. So I always used to say, you know what? People don't watch us because we look like Channel 5. They watch us because we're local. Well, let's go back to the other offering of story yep. about perhaps when you were a child, mm -hmm. um, what was the uh, little seed planted in you that got you interested in, in film and, and TV and um, the, sure. maybe some of the milestones of that? Sure. Where did you grow up? I, I grew up in Dudley, mm -hmm. uh, a couple towns outside of Worcester. Yeah. Going into the Arbor Mall was like a big big thing to do back in those days. Ah, okay. um, and we had a little movie theater mm -hmm. uh, in town. In Dudley. Yep, a little okay. two-screen one. Mm -hmm. It was exciting. And I remember I was 13 years old for the, fir the first time I saw Star Wars mm -hmm. in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. And oh, I boy. was just blown away, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, blown away. And then Indiana Jones came out, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was like, it was thrilling. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like the excitement and enthusiasm and that type of experience was what made me want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Little did I know <laughs> it was going to take a 90 degree turn mm -hmm. after I actually got into the real world. Mm. How much uh, film is a part of your life now? Mm -hmm. um, and how about television? Was that significant for you growing up? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Saturday morning cartoons was mm -hmm. always big. Uh, TV shows, you know, Starsky and Hutch and Emergency. Oh, yeah. and, okay. Favorite um, cartoon? Um, favorite cartoon. <laughs> Boy, that's a tough one. I would ha probably have to say Super Friends. Oh, I like okay. the Super Friends. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Actually, it's, uh, you know, I just, I just really like superheroes. It's so exciting mm -hmm. that uh, Marvel is doing such a killer job mm -hmm. with the superhero genre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, and you know, it's always a happy ending. Uh, when I was a young adult, I went through you know, a phase like many young adults mm -hmm. do where it's, where it's deep and it's mm -hmm. serious, but it always turned into a happy ending. I used to write, I'd write stories. Uh, um, in high school? Yeah, in high mm -hmm. school and through college. Um, and you wrote a novel. And I wrote a novel, mm -hmm. yep. And it was always, it's always, the older I get, the, the more happiness mm -hmm. I like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to surround myself with that because, you, you know, there's, there's enough seriousness in the world. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing something to balance all that seriousness, mm -hmm. which we certainly see in media and TV today. Right, uh -huh. right. So how, do, how does that work for your novel? Um, did you finish it? Does it have a happy oh ending? Oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. it, was the, it was the first of a trilogy. Um, wow. So uh -huh. I used to run a Dungeons and Dragons game through mm -hmm. high school and through college. Actually, it was really cool because I had a group that I ran in high school, and I started a new group in college, mm -hmm. and then... Um, in each of their campaigns, they would hear about this other group. And then I brought both groups together. And it's like they knew each other because they keep, had wow. kept, kept hearing about them. Uh -huh. So that was a ex really exciting game. So this is through uh, technology they're no, hearing? No, no. Oh, this is old school. They all got, I, I was at Lowell at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was only 45 minutes away mm -hmm. from home. Mm -hmm. So all my college friends came out um, ah, on a weekend. Okay. And we had this mm -hmm. big, massive wow. game. Mm -hmm. So the book was the um, best campaign mm -hmm. that I ever ran. Um, it had a really good storyline, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and it had like really good um, characters in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the players, um, 
did those roles really well. So I wanted to, I wanted to write it uh, as a story. And it took me several years, but I did finish it. Wow. Uh huh. And where is it now? It is on my computer. Mm -hmm. um, it sat there for several years, and then I had kids, and I kind of got away from it. And one time I was like, you know what? My kids are old enough now. I'm going to read my story <laughs> to my kids. Mm -hmm. And how exciting will this mm -hmm. be? So they jumped on the bed, and mm -hmm. I pulled up a chair, and I pulled out my story. And by the time I got through the first <laughs> chapter, I said, wow this really needs to be rewritten. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, the idea is there, but the writing really, it needs some help. I'm not the same guy that I was when I wrote it. And um, I don't think I expressed myself as well as I should. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, at some point I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revisit that mm -hmm. and rework it. How did your kids like it? They agreed with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, there's always editing for later on. There is. There, um, you know what? I mean, you can spend the rest of your life making a piece of art perfect, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I've always been of the, of the mind that you take what you learn from one show and you go on, you make the next show better. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wrote that and then I never went back mm -hmm. to, you know, polish it up and perfect it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you had a little interest in writing as well? Yes. Yeah. That you spent that much time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You know, can, like when you're writing, it's just words on a page, so it can be anything. Mm -hmm. um, so that, to me, is very exciting. Um, making TV is hard. Uh, I did a scripted show with a, um, a summer camp in connection with the Y. Mm -hmm. I had 15 kids aged 13 to 15. I wrote a 30-page script, which is 30 minutes long, and I had them for 40 hours. Oh. On the 40th hour, mm -hmm. we shot the last scene hmm. of that 30-minute show. Mm -hmm. and that doesn't include editing, because I was editing outside wow. of that. Wow. So I always say that as an example of, it takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But when you're writing, anything, you mm -hmm. can do anything. And mm -hmm. you just describe it, and uh, I find that incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who knows, stay tuned perhaps later on for future novels and TV shows. Yeah. Who knows? Right? Yeah. I know. I, I, you know, I love that. Yeah. I love that. It's hard to get to. Mm -hmm. Most of what we do at HCAM, we cover things that are going to be happening anyways to mm -hmm. bring them to our community, or we have things that are presenting information. Um, uh, we don't do a lot of scripted stuff, mm -hmm. which I wish we could, because that's the most fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, let's see. Uh, and backtracking a little more uh, how your life intersects with this work that you love, um, I hear references to the importance of community for you, for your work, um, for this station. How do you think that uh, connection, that importance of community, uh, became cultivated in you, uh, perhaps in, in childhood at some Probably, point? Probably um, my father was a founding member of the Dudley Lions Club, which is celebrating mm -hmm. their 50th year mm -hmm. this month, actually. Wow. And so I and always the Lions saw Club uh, honor, uh, can you define the Lions Club and um, what they do? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's an international organization mm -hmm. of clubs, usually by town. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Hopkinton has one, and basically it's a group of people who look to support their community. Mm -hmm. they, run, they run events that um, they gain money that they can then go out and support their community. Okay. So for example, mm -hmm. this is kind of the formative thing. I remember as a kid, my father would come home with these big cardboard boxes of light bulbs, and they would mm -hmm. walk up and down the street and they wow. would sell light bulbs to people. Wow. And that's how they would get money. They mm -hmm. also run an old time car show once a year. Mm -hmm. So the ticket sales uh, that come in and the sponsors that they get give them money, mm -hmm. which they then turn around and they run programs. For example, a big one that they run is um, Christmas baskets. Mm -hmm. So if people are in need um, during the holiday season, they can get a basket with some gifts for their kids and some mm -hmm. food. And, uh, for a nice meal and stuff like that. And if somebody, they're big into um, sight too. Mm -hmm. So if there's a person in town who needs glasses and can't afford it, they help out with that. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, sometimes they would get together and they would like, you know, build um, a ramp for somebody or do things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So I grew up seeing my father be very active in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that I really recognized it um, in myself until I actually discovered Access TV because it clicked like mm -hmm. this is what I do, you know, for giving uh, to my community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just love that especially with the community groups and the business organizations, they're just part of the fabric of what we do. Mm -hmm. And they don't join the garden club to make TV, mm -hmm. you know, but we can help them connect to people who want to do things that the gardening club does. Yeah. Yeah. So we try really hard to, you know, make it painless and effortless for them to get their uh, message out through what we fondly call the multimedia empire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you, you came from a family of nine boys? No, my father did. Oh, your father yes, did. Yes, I okay. have three sisters. Okay, uh huh. So uh, there, I would imagine that uh, family, uh, your father coming from nine boys, which is quite, quite a family <laughs> constellation yes. there. Yeah, he was the boys. youngest. Uh huh. So, yeah, yeah. as he said, you know, they used to pull up the tub. Um, once a week for them to all take a uh, bath, and mm -hmm. he was the youngest one, so he went Ah, last. there's community for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh-huh. And um, I know also, uh, let's see, uh, so uh, you spent this time um, in community as a stay-at-home father. Uh, go back to that just for a couple minutes, yeah. um, which uh, is uh, perhaps it was a shift of uh, role for you um, and yes. how, did, how did that work? What did you learn was from like, being home and letting go of what you love to do? Right. It was like closing a loop because as my father told me um, uh, as time went on, he never had a father figure in his life. His mm -hmm. father had left the family mm -hmm. and he just had these eight older brothers and it was pretty rough and tumble. They never had any money. So when he became a father, he didn't really have a role model, mm -hmm. and he did the best that he could. Mm -hmm. And in order to do the best that he could for his family, he worked several jobs, mm -hmm. up to as many as five wow. at one wow. time. Wow. So we very rarely saw him. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it was because you know, he had to lower the boom on us because we were misbehaving. Um, uh, so he kind of had that aspect with us. And when I grew up and went to um, college, he um, said, you know, he made his living on his back and he wanted me mm -hmm. to make my living using my brain. Mm -hmm. And so that like really impacted me and gave me such a clear vision of he wanted me to achieve more than what he had done. Mm -hmm. And I really was impressed with what he had done from right. where he came from. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it was very, very meaningful for me to be able to take six years off to raise my family because that is what my father would have done mm -hmm. had he been able to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the fact that I was able to recognize mm -hmm. that and really, um, really build a bond with my family was mm -hmm. incredibly mm -hmm. valuable for me. Yeah, and you're fortunate. Your family had the good fortune of that experience. And well, you have to tell them that. Because, have to uh, or ask them, not tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but how you made uh, some progression for your whole family in that way uh, mm -hmm. is a touching story. Um, and I know that you are also very connected with a faith community uh, yes. in church in town as well. That's very important to yes. you. Um, yes, we, um, we were living on Jamie Lane at the time. Mm -hmm. And my mother-in-law, who lives um, in, just outside of Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, knew that one street over was Pastor Dick Germain, mm -hmm. who is very well known, mm -hmm. and she was praying that we would end up at his church. Ah, and mm -hmm. we were like, you know what? We're just looking around. You know, we're trying different churches we're seeing. And one day, every year, uh, Dick would run a Bible study for people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so wow. one night, I told my wife, I'm going to go check it out. And I did. And I came back. And I said, that is a smart guy. <laughs> and so we went back. Uh -huh. And then we started, his, we started going to their church. And I remember the very first day I walked into that church, I could literally feel it. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know what this is. I've never felt this before, but something feels really good. Mm -hmm. And I was going mm -hmm. to my wife, do you feel that? And you know, she didn't feel that the same way that I did, mm -hmm. but um, 
it was really impactful. So we ended up, we ended up there for, I don't know, over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, that's a long time also. So uh, that seems like a bit of a theme in your life with uh, these things that click for you mm -hmm. uh, that are related to people and connection and community. Yeah. Um, well, any, anything else that we uh, didn't cover because there's just a few minutes left? Um, anything you wanted to? Well, I, no, it's been really fun. It's been really exciting. Talking See how about fast it. it goes by. I know, I know. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, another thing that uh, has been of interest uh, to me is I have kids with diabetes. Uh, so yeah. we've been involved with the uh, JDRF. Which um, is? Uh, well, actually, it used to be the, you know, juvenile diabetes research. Mm -hmm. But they actually, they just, just like the AARP, mm -hmm. they just said our name is JDRF okay. now. And they don't mm -hmm. have the, uh, they don't have the words mm -hmm. associated with it. So, um, so we've done years of walks and we've done a few years where my uh, youngest and I would go and take the, um, the ride um, bike, to raise bike, money. Biking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. You weren't taking an Uber to earn money. <laughs> <laughs> no. But what was great the first year, I can't remember where we went, but it was um, very flat. Uh -huh. And we, we like trained out here on all these hills. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were just gliding right along. Well, it's a wonderful way for you both to have connection toward this common goal. And when yes. is the next uh, ride? Uh, right now, we're not, we're not, I'm not signed up for this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I'm not sure when the next one that will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's a way that you have uh, worked on dealing with juvenile diabetes all together as a family as well. Yeah, we try to give back. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they do a lot of good, they fund a lot of good research. And the mm -hmm. technology that's coming out of that is astounding. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really is. So we're really grateful for yeah. all the work. Well, technology is uh, kind of a common uh, theme of yours. And, uh, like yes. it or not, you went to college and you had a little bit of that, and you are kind of the guru around here <laughs> in technology, and it, it feeds into your wonderful work here at HCAM Studio. Um, and I see that we are now out of time, unfortunately. But um, I don't know. You have a bit of uh, guiding wisdom to send us off to about, about life, what you've learned at this point. Uh, uh, I would say that, you know, just be aware. Mindfulness is a, such an important skill. Mm -hmm. Just be aware of yourself in the present time, in the moment, and enjoy it. Because, you know, there's so much, there's so much goodness in the world if we, if we kind of meditate on that. Mm -hmm. Coming from a TV media studio, that is important. Mm -hmm.